Today we're doing the nitration of bromobenzene, which is an example of electrophilic aromatic substitution. Now, to do this, we're going to need to work with concentrated acids, so it's really important that we wear our safety goggles. So, we have some concentrated nitric acid. We're going to add one milliliter of this to a flask. But before we get too far, I'm going to go ahead and put in the magnetic stir bar into the flask so that way it won't splash around when I add it later. So I'll just use the pipette here to measure it since this part is not necessary to get it super accurate. So there's the nitric acid and then I'm going to need a catalyst which is sulfuric acid. And this is also concentrated sulfuric acid. Now you'll notice I'm, I'm not really wearing gloves. Um, you can if you want. That's something where if you get the acid on you, you'll know pretty quickly that you've got it on your skin. And you'll be able to wash it off very, very fast in the sink. Uh, you probably won't get that much damage to your skin. If you get the nitric acid on you, your skin will turn a little bit yellow. If you get the sulfuric acid on you, it'll probably turn a little red because it burns you a little. All right, now, we have this in a beaker, so there's a round bottom flask sitting inside of the beaker, and this beaker is about halfway full of cool water. And that's just to help moderate the temperature of the reaction because this is an exothermic reaction and we want to be careful with it. We're going to go ahead and get the stir, stirring bar going now. And at this point, we have our bromobenzene and we're going to add this drop wise, about one drop every five seconds. We're going to add it half a milliliter at a time. So we'll just use our little dropper here and uh, do that. Now, when we're actually in lab and, and you're doing this with a lot of other people, I would suggest go ahead and grab what you need of the bromobenzene and then uh, just get your own dropper and not operate off of only the bottle because we, we've got to share this. So uh, we'll add that one, one drop at a time for a while here. So we get about half a milliliter up into this dropper. So far, 
we have done two additions, so a total of one milliliter. And you may notice that there is a solid in our flask. And our product is going to be a solid, and so it's not entirely unexpected. So let's just keep going and add it the second milliliter slowly, and then we'll move on from there. finished adding all the bromobenzene that we needed and then we've waited an additional 10 minutes and you, you can see that we have some solid in the flask and at this point we're going to take that and pour this mixture into a beaker that has some ice cold water in it, uh, deionized water. Alright so here's our beaker with the 10 milliliters approximately of ice cold water. We're just gonna try to pour everything in, including the stir bar, just to get it out. And I'm gonna go ahead and try to rinse this out a little, just with water. And uh, try not to breathe that vapor that came out of there. So this is helping to dilute our sulfuric acid and we'll be able to wash that away. Now we're going to prepare a buchner funnel and filter this and then we will wash it with some additional cold deionized water and we'll be able to get that out of our our flask, we'll use the additional water to get this out of here. We'll use some water to wash it out of that just to make sure we get everything into our uh, buchner funnel. And we will uh, we'll be recrystallizing this later, so there's really no need to weigh the first buchner funnel paper that we're using. Uh, so that second purification step will will take the place of trying to weigh the crude, trying to weigh the crude product. So we're just gonna get this added into the inner tunnel. And it may stick like this, so we'll just have to get some spatula or a rubber policeman. That is actually their job to kind of get this out up here. And it's perfectly fine to let the stir bar go into the Buchner funnel as well. Um, I don't have to worry too much about that. We'll separate it out later. And sometimes it's helpful to just coax this out with some water. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop the video and we'll come back when I actually get all of this out. Alright, so we have done the filtration and uh, there's still a little bit left in the beaker that I'm having a difficult time getting out. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to transfer all the solid back into here since we've washed off all the acid and that's the main step that we wanted to do that and remove pretty much all of the water that we could. 
now we need to recrystallize this. So the, the process for doing that is to take 95% ethanol and just barely get this to dissolve in it. And what we're going to do to just barely get it to dissolve is to add just enough and to get it hot. So we're gonna have to put this on a heating plate or a heating well or something to get that temperature up. So the better you can get this, um, like by adding the least amount of ethanol that you can, uh, the easier this will be. So go slow on the ethanol and try to add the minimum amount that you can. Um, I think I'll just put the stir bar in there too. We'll fish it out once everything is dissolved. So getting all of this, just scraping this off of the filter paper here. So right now the ethanol is cold. So we're not going to dissolve, add enough to get all of this to dissolve right away. Because if we did, then we would have added too much. And sometimes I'll use this to kind of rinse down the sides. So I'm gonna try adding maybe about five milliliters. Somewhere around in there. It's, the product should not be very soluble. That's the whole idea. We want it just somewhat soluble. I'm going to go ahead and get this on a thermal well or a hot plate, warm this up, and try to get all of this to dissolve. Once it does, we've got to let it cool down slowly. So I ended up adding just about 10 milliliters. You might want to go a little bit less than that just in case. And I've almost got everything in here dissolved and it's getting close to the boiling point. Um, what we want to do is get all of the solid dissolved and then let it cool down and hopefully a pure crystal of our product, paranitro, um, bromobenzene will come out of the solution then and we will um, get a mass and an infrared spectrum of that product and also a, a melting point. So looks pretty good. We get basically everything dissolved here and we might want to just let this uh, come up pretty close to boiling or actually just a little bit boiling. That'll help drive off just a smidge of the solvent. Then we're going to let this cool down slowly. Don't put it in ice or anything just yet. After it's down to room temperature, then you can put this beaker in an ice bath and let it cool down further. If it seems like your product is not going to come out of the solution, you can add uh, one or two drops of water to the ethanol mixed uh, solution, and that will help it crash out, but only if you're having trouble getting it back out of the solution. So now that it has cooled down to room temperature, I went ahead and put our mixture in an ice bath just to help 
get any more out of the ethanol. After this, we're going to take a pre-weighed filter paper, use that in a Buchner funnel, and we can filter this off. We'll leave it on the Buchner funnel for a little while. That will help us dry the product. And this won't take too long to dry because ethanol uh, evaporates a lot quicker than water does. So now we've filtered it through the Buchner funnel and we're going to let this sit on here for a little bit to try to pull off any of the residual solvent. But as you can see, we started with a little yellow tint to our product and now we have obtained a much purer product as indicated by the lighter color. So once this dries, we're going to get our infrared spectrum and melting point, and of course the mass of our product that we've made. And we've already weighed this filter paper, so that should make that process very easy.